Hello, welcome to another episode of Sean and Alicia. Do a thing. <laughs> talk about stuff. <laughs> I can't just say Sean and Alicia have a podcast. Why not? Because it's Sean and Carter have a podcast. We just I have a... I can steal it. Hijacked. Hijacked. Sean and Alicia hijack a podcast. All right. Very nice. Okay. Back for another exciting episode. And uh, our sound quality should be noticeably better than the first one, which I'm going to apologize for, even though I haven't heard it yet because I haven't edited it. But I know that our capture process was not a good one. Sure. How are you feeling about the headsets? Sure. You ask me a lot of technological things and explain things to me like this. This is such a better set. I don't care. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> My it's wife irrelevant is the to best. me. I love you too. Appreciate what I do. I do. It's most of the datas are irrelevant to me. Most of the datas? Yeah. Did you, you just heard say it. that? I pluralize whatever I want. Data is plural. <laughs> I know. What is the singular of data? Datum. Okay, good. I like to add S's to things. I do it. Shut up. Let's just do this. We what are, are we doing, doing it. We're doing it right now. Okay. So what do you want to what do you want to talk about today, Alicia Pez? I think, I believe you suggested that we oh, talk about the Come Emmys. on, play along. <laughs> He's forcing me to do this. He's got a gun to my head. Nuh-uh, Please I'm just stop. saying. <laughs> Sean told me we should talk about the Emmys. Let's do it. Well, I, there's a good reason, right? Okay. I love talking about the Emmys. How much TV do you and I watch? Some. What, what are Minor. we watching right now? What's like your favorite show that we're watching right now? What do you think? You already know. I'm Newsroom. Gonna, newsroom. I love news. You're really. loving it. Yeah. I, I I think yeah. my favorite character at this point is still is Sloane, oddly enough. She's just so weird. She's so weird. She's very awkward. Very. It's hilarious. She's kind of socially inept, which is very strange because she's such an, such an attractive woman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she plays an economist. She is uh, played by Olivia Munn, and she plays an economist, and she's very much an economist. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't understand people at all. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, <laughs> but Newsroom will, of course, be nominated Do for, they? like, next. Yeah. Next Emmy season, when everyone will start complaining about that. People are really divided on Newsroom. Really? There, There's, like, a lot of, hey. a lot of people that... Even though they like it, they're still like, this is a bad show. And I'm like, have you never seen something by Aaron Sorkin before? Because this is exactly the same as everything else he's done. Yeah. Ever. Pretty much. I saw a funny tweet from Patton Oswalt that after David Krumholtz's character appeared as a psychiatrist. He said he wants to start a spinoff series called Diagnosis Bacon. It's <laughs> awesome. I know. I thought so. Okay. So let's talk about the Emmys that are coming up. Um, For this year. This year. So um, we're just going to, we're going to go in the anticlimactic order. The Emmys oh. will probably go in the reverse of this. Yes. Like we're going to, we're going to tackle the biggest categories first and sure. knock them out because that will inform a lot of our later decisions. So right up front, we've got Outstanding Drama Series. We have six nominees. And we've seen all but one. And we have seen all but one. We have Boardwalk Empire, Breaking Bad, Downton Abbey, Game of Thrones, Homeland, and Mad Men. And we have not All watched right. Boardwalk Empire. Correct. And I haven't watched any Boardwalk Empire. I have watched two or three episodes. Like the first season. I was not hooked. It, it was gets right. it gets nominated year after year. I know. And so does I Steve Buscemi. That. I feel yeah. like I feel like I'm missing something really good. And someday well, when it's over, everyone will be like, You didn't watch it? And I'll be like, Well now I can. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'll have the time. So Well, yeah. So anyway, that's what, the only one we missed. What's your initial like favorite right out right out the bat? Well duh. Well, duh, it's Homeland. Why is it duh. Homeland? Because I was so enthralled with it as we watched it. I couldn't, we could not stop watching it. We watched that show in like a week and a half, every episode. Sometimes, doubled up. Sometimes I annoy you because I won't want to watch more than one episode right. of something like, I'm really let's enjoying. Do let's and do it. Homeland was not that way. No, I, I we was both like, like, let's watch yes, it. let's watch the let's next watch one. Let's watch Homeland right now. <laughs> Homeland. It was, the, the drama was so compelling. I mean, I, I do love all the other shows that are on there. I love Downton Abbey. I enjoy Breaking Bad every year. Mad Men is great. It was really nice to have Mad Men back, finally. Yeah, of course. But nothing was as absolutely, I had to watch it as tense, as compelling as Homeland. It was amazing. Homeland was so well produced by Howard Gordon, Howard Gordon, who was the guy who for eight years produced 24. And I loved 24. And now there's like no major espionage series on network tv at all and he went to really? i didn't know that can you think of one i don't know there 24 became the longest running spy series at okay. eight years which oh. is not that long 
No, not really. Not for like the longest TV series that right. are all like in their teens or twenties. Like right. Simpsons is like on its twenty fifth season. Something like that. Um, and so when I heard that he did this show, I was like, I need to check this out. And it was twenty four boiled down to the best things about it without the gimmick of doing the clock. Like yeah. which often would distract from <laughs> much better performances. Yeah. Plus well we'll get to oh them and we'll get to them later. But <laughs> overall, yeah, I would I, I'm gonna it was totally such a agree. Good show. I can't wait till it comes back. Second series of Game of Thrones was great. Yeah. Um Breaking Bad, I think Oh. Do you think this was the best season so far? I this don't is know. the Gustavo Probably. season. Uh, I mean, I think they all get better in Breaking Bad at least. I I've enjoyed every series more They and just more. they keep getting more and more crazy and just awesome. Walt's getting more and more crazy. And we haven't watched any of the newest one yet. I know, which I've heard such good things about. I every t- every time there's a new episode, I'll, I'll see on Twitter like um, recap of the game-changing episode of Breaking Bad. And I was like every yeah. episode is game-changing yeah. like Every episode ends with you going, what the? What the crap? <laughs> what the hell? So, yeah, going to agree with Homeland. So, I'm Mad Men. I'm glad to see it back, but I would say this, I mean, not that it wasn't a great season, but I don't think it was as outstanding as Homeland. I would say, and we'll talk about this later, I, I would nominate Mad Men for writing. Yeah. Overall yes, drama series, that. definitely Showtime. Yeah. Or definitely Homeland, Homeland. on Showtime. And Downtown Abbey, just no. I'm sorry. It was a romance. I'm sorry. Can they have an outstanding daytime soap opera? <laughs> outstanding PBS soap opera category? Because it wins. Take it. Yeah. It, it wins. <laughs> it's not an outstanding drama series. Yeah, it's really good. And yeah. I think out of this list. It's, it's fluffiest. It's the fluffiest of these. I think there hitters. are a lot more people that I know that watch Downton Abbey. Yeah. Which, which is actually might speak to why it shouldn't win. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> But it's okay. Yes. So, uh, okay, let's move on to Outstanding Comedy Series. Okay. Six nominees, 30 Rock, The Big Bang Theory, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Girls, Modern Family, and Veep. This, we have fewer viewerships. We do not watch all of these shows. We, I have, I have the entire season of Veep ready for us to watch, and we just haven't. We just haven't started it. We just it. haven't gotten to it. Curb Your Enthusiasm, I don't really watch. You watched you it for a little while, no. and then you were like, okay, Larry David's just really annoying. No, I was just kind of like, eh, it's funny. It's the same thing every time. It it's is just... the same thing every time, but so is Seinfeld, yeah. and that's like one of the most watched series ever. Yes, regardless, I don't watch that, and we do not watch The Big Bang Theory. I've never seen an episode. Carter and I talked about why The Big Bang Theory, there's no way it should be on this list. Really? It does not belong in this crowd, and in fact... We don't really think that 30 Rock does either based on it, it, this season of 30 Rock. Just not. Yeah. Not great. Um, I would love to see 30 Rock and Big Bang Theory's uh, nominations replaced by two oh, of my favorite my goodness, series. Yes. And I would pick one of these two as the winner. Yeah. Thir- I would pick Parks and Rec or <sighs> Louie. Both of those are amazing shows. Why aren't they on this list? I can't believe that they're not on this Parks list. Parks and Rec was amazing this season. I would have a hard so time great. choosing which one would be my winner, but one of those two would be my winner, not one of these. Yeah, agreed. I think with the ones that we have left, I love Modern Family. Curb Your Enthusiasm is what yeah. what I expected. I wouldn't make it the winner. Girls. Yeah. It's for a debut season. It was the first was season so of great. Girls, and it, it just... Really funny. like. Everyone in the comedy world was like, what Lena, Lena Dunham is doing right now is amazing. Yeah. I can't believe she's so young and writing and directing her own show so well. It's really, it's really impressive. Yeah, it is. As you said, it's mostly impressive. I would say it's not like the funniest on there, but... It's not the funniest, but that's why it's good comedy. Yeah. I don't think Louie is the funniest. I think Parks and Rec is probably the funnier funniest. than Louie. Yeah, agreed. But I think like best comedy series, I think it's important for comedy to be to be didactic. To be and balanced. like show things and talk okay. about issues and stuff. Girls does that. South Park never gets nominated for Outstanding Comedy Series, and I, I wish it would because it tackles actual big issues. Yes, it does. I, I think I, I swayed my mom a little bit by showing her the South Park movie. Because it's all, it's all about very real things, even if it is completely wacky and out yes. there and full of and swearing. Crude, and crude, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Okay. So uh, the outstanding miniseries and TV movie category, we're like, we're not in there no. at all. I mean, I, I know what I want. I would love to watch Luther. It's on Netflix. Uh, it's supposed to be really good. It has Idris Elba in uh-huh. it. 
Um, of course, we watched American Horror Story. We right. talked about it on the podcast last year. And we've seen And Sherlock. we've skipped uh, Game Change, which I really want to watch because I keep reading things about it. But we haven't seen Hatfields and McCoys or Hemingway and Gellhorn, and I don't know that we will. <laughs> no, probably not. They're those like historical miniseries that were like, oh, yeah, I'm oh, sure they're good. Oh, so great. They're for I other people. <laughs> so that leaves Sherlock. Oh, which was? Which was fantastic. Amazing. The second series of Sherlock, <sighs> I could not believe. So good. I loved the first series. I, I couldn't believe that the second series was even better. It was, though. It was fantastic. And I won't, we won't really spoil anything here, but the last episode of the series there are only three episodes per series they're each an hour and a half long the last episode of the series deals with the sherlock death issue because he always dies apparently yeah like every every iteration of sherlock holmes has got to have sherlock die die or at least fake his death or something right and it's happened in the robert downey jr movies it happened on house with he he fakes his death at the end of the series um, and it happened here, and it was done he- on this series. I liked the way it was done more than any I'm other time puzzled. I've seen it. Right. They deliberately <laughs> left you with basically a huge cliffhanger on well, what... You, not really. I mean, you know he's alive, so... And also, I have a question, because American Horror Story, remember when it got nominated and we were like, why? And they were like, well, it's a close-ended story, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Why is Sherlock in there then? I think it, theirs is because of the way it is actually run on TV then and because it is so short. That, there are two different qualifications that make it. Either the close-ended story or the way it's aired in like hour and a half blocks. Like a, the way, a TV movie? That's yes. what a TV movie is? Yes. Okay. I think those are the two different qualifications. I don't understand the category either. <laughs> well, but I, do not I understand understood why people it are so until angry. American Horror Story got nominated. And then I was like, oh, okay. What if I they guess I don't. are allowed to, they're allowed to. And they did, and they won't they win. No, but at least they got a nom. That's nice. Good for them. It was I enjoyed that as well. Not as good as Sherlock. Uh, outstanding variety music or comedy series. We have The Colbert Report, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, Jimmy Kimmel Live, and by the way, Jimmy Kimmel's hosting the yeah, Emmys. first time. Which is unfortunate because he won't win this category. Late <laughs> Night with Jimmy Fallon, Real Time with Bill Maher, and Saturday Night Live. Um. Well, Daily Show's going to win. Daily, Daily Show wins this category every, every year. year. Every like all year. all the time. I think they've won it something like 11 times in 14 years. Yeah, something absurd like that. So. I'd love to see them win. SNL had a had kind of a mixed bag of a season. They had like really good episodes yeah. and then others that were like, okay. I liked this, this season a lot. And I mean, they have people, hard hitters, leaving the show, which is sad. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I, but I, they always do. I mean, I will speak for Jimmy Fallon. Every time I don't watch this show, but every no. time we see a clip on it Hulu is really or something, funny. it is so funny. He did. I will make sure I link this in the info. He did a parody of Downton Abbey, <laughs> Downton Six B, called Downton Six B because he it's he in films 6B. in Studio Six B, and he just it's Spot obvious on. it's obvious he that he is. really likes Downton Abbey, <laughs> <laughs> but he just makes fun of everything perfectly yes it's brilliant his uh my super hot daughter mary (laughs) and my other super hot daughter whatever her name is and hedith and hedith is played (laughs) by fred armison (laughs) (laughs) he makes a beautiful woman always yeah so we're just gonna assume that john stewart's gonna win this category as, as usual which is which is fine um, we're, I guess I'm going to skip the outstanding reality competition program, except to, to note that the voice is in here and which we like after last season, I am a definite supporter of the voice. I think it's one of the best competition shows I've ever seen. I really like how the show and the network really, uh, it's hold up loose. their, they really promote their contestants. Like even when they lose, I, I like that. I don't see that like with American Idol and yeah. other competition shows. You also said um, when we were talking about it recently that you like how flexible the show is. I mean, between every season, they make a new set of rules. Not entirely new, but they'll add changes and Yeah, new gameplay options, basically. Yeah, uh, to make the, it more interesting. In the new competition that's coming up, which will have just started when this is posted, I think. Sure. Um, <laughs> you can't think ahead in time. You're t- I don't know what tense you would use. This will have started. Got it. Sure. This will be posted like the second week in August. I think that I think the voice starts right around the We're end in of, the August. Second week of August. I mean the second week of September. Got it. <laughs> um, very silly. Anyway, uh, they added a new uh, 
gameplay element where each uh, judge is going to be able to, to steal two contestants from another judge. Yeah, pretty cool. Should which interesting. Which could be interesting because they really do coach them. They're like mentor coaches persons. Yeah, it's yeah. Nice. Uh, so we'll we'll skip an outstanding variety music or comedy special because we haven't seen any of those. And Betty White's ninetieth birthday. Yeah. It's not a category I'm going to vote on. No. Outstanding reality program. Don't know any of these, but I'm glad to see MythBusters is nominated. I do know that show. Yep. And I'm compelled to watch Shark Tank sometime. It Why? Is, it's what on is Hulu. It? Uh, it's a friend of ours told us about it. It's a show where people are present their ideas to a board of investors. Oh. And they have to convince them that they have like the, the next, best idea yeah. and that they should invest in it. And then the investors do pick people to invest in and then they have to compete against each other. Right. For the, for the money they need to succeed. Got it. I vaguely remember hearing about that. Yeah. It sounds interesting. I, it must be if it was nominated for uh-huh. best program. Uh, outstanding host for reality. Yep. Don't care. Well, and I'm going to give it to Betty White. Yeah. Let's give it to Betty White. I like her. Let's give everything to Betty White. Sure. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> so. And once again. Yeah. We'll skip ahead to the acting category. Yes, because who cares about outstanding children's programs? Um, kids. Mm, yeah. And kid programmers, probably. I suppose. Outstanding lead actor in drama series, we have uh, Robert or Hugh Bonneville from uh, Downton Abbey, Steve Buscemi from Boardwalk Empire, Brian Cranston from Breaking Bad, Michael C. Hall from Dexter, John Hamm from Mad Men, and Damian Lewis from Homeland. So I don't know. This is a really good category. It is. I'm kind of surprised to see Downton Abbey in there. Yeah. Again. Uh, to, I agreed. I think I think they probably could have pulled. Like, what about uh, what's his face? Uh, Kelsey Grammer. Why yeah. wasn't he? I've heard great things. He about won a Boss. Golden Globe for that. Yeah. Why didn't he get nominated for? I don't know. An Emmy. I not, mean, I, not, I do not, like not Downton Abbey, of course, but I don't don't think they, it was de- as demanding as some of the other roles are. I think the hardest uh, the hardest roles to play that are on this Walter White Sorry, are probably Walter White. Walter White from Breaking Bad and Nicholas Brody from Homeland. Yeah, um, I, I I might give it to I just liked Homeland enough and I love the two stars' performances. I would probably give it to him. Damian Lewis is he was a actor who played Dick Winters in Band of Brothers. If you've ever mm-hmm. seen that series, because you might not have Homeland is probably a little more niche right now yeah. but if you've seen band of brothers he's like the main guy for probably half of the episodes um you you end up just loving him because he's like yeah. such a good leader and such a good like wartime soldier fun side note i met the real dick winters one time <laughs> yeah he's from hershey pennsylvania so not Nearby. not that far from here uh but in this show homeland he plays a soldier who has been he was a prisoner of war for like eight years or something. yeah no, and not that long, but a while, a long time, years. I don't want to give too much away, but basically he's found, at the very beginning of the series, he's found in the camp. They assumed he was dead. His wife assumed he was dead. Like, the world has moved on without him, and yeah. he has to come back and... Readjust to American life. Yeah. Not being a prisoner, and et cetera. And he goes through some pretty crazy stuff, and Damian Lewis uh, really pulls it off. So fantastic. He's really he's good. great. So, yeah, I love John Hamm, and we have not watched the latest season of Dexter. We've watched all the others. So yeah. we like Michael um, C. Hall. I did say that we were talking about how in performances and everything, they're nominated for one episode. Right. Not the whole series, but they pick one. And uh, I did particularly like the episode that John Hamm was nominated for. Right. It's The Other Woman, which is like, it was kind of the last episode that you got a sense that Don Draper is like done with cheating. Yeah. Like something happens that just scares the hell out of him yeah and he goes through like this weird like fever dream yes. and he all this sick and has yeah a crazy hallucination and it was very well all very his well fears done. and anxiety about cheating like work his way into this sickness yeah and uh take over his consciousness for a day yeah it's pretty crazy so i i definitely i like that they chose that episode shall we move on to actress Sure. Outstanding lead actress in drama series, Kathy Bates from Harry's Law. <laughs> I'm sure she's fantastic, but it's... Yeah. She jumped from The Office to Harry's Law. <laughs> yeah. I guess she can just do anything. She's also nominated for a guest spot for playing Charlie Sheen's character <laughs> <laughs> on uh, Two and a Half Men. 
Uh, Glenn Close from Damages, which we never watched, and Carter and I even talked about in the very first episode of Sean and Carter Have a Podcast because we said no one watches TNT. Mm -hmm. Claire Danes for Homeland, Michelle Dockery from Downton Abbey, Juliana Mart, say her last name. Thank you for The Good Wife, and Elizabeth Moss for Mad Men. Yes. And I, hands down, there's there's no debate for me here. This is Claire Danes. Oh, if you watch it, you will know. She had, once again, it's all about the episode, and this particular performance was incredible. Yes. Oh, my gosh. She, you you find out pretty early on that she deals with a little bit of a mental issue. Disability. Uh, and she takes medication for it. And in... in she goes off her meds. She goes basically. off her meds, and she goes... Absolute she goes nuts. breakdown. And she was incredible. She's Amazing to watch. Totally buy it. Like, yeah. to me, Claire Danes is that crazy person. Yeah, she is. <laughs> She's so good. But again, I will say once again on Mad Men, I love the episode that they chose for Peggy. It was mm-hmm. the episode where, do we spoiler? Are we okay with this? We just talk about it? I, I'm trying not to do major spoilers. Okay. Well, there's a big change for Peggy and it happened in this episode and it was great. It was wonderful. It made me cry a tiny bit. Yep. Maybe a it probably made bit. me cry more than you. Probably. <laughs> it always does. <laughs> So comedy series, outstanding actor. We have Alec Baldwin in 30 Rock. Again, I'm not sure why nope. 30 Rock is. No. Nope. Don't get it. Louis C.K. for Louis. Don Cheadle in House of Lies, which I'm sure is really good. Yeah. We looked up the the total cast of that. Who else? There was another. Oh, it was uh, Don Ralphio from Parks and Rec yeah. is one of the lead actors on this show, as well as uh, Kristen Bell. And Kristen Bell is always, like her. is always great. I saw a animated gif of her doing the boo 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 thing that is so funny. <laughs> what movie what movie is that from? Is it It's one with Russell Brand. Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Thank you. Okay, anyway, John Cryer for Two and a Half Men cuz he always cares. gets nominated. Larry David for Curb Your Enthusiasm, nope. which is kind of a head scratcher for me, and Jim Parsons for Again, The Big Bang no. Theory and So, I would say the winner is Louis CK. I hope he gets it. The definite winner Louis is Louis CK. If Jim Parsons wins, I am calling shenanigans on this. <laughs> that is not that doesn't make any sense. He well, he won last year, didn't he? Yes. So, he I think he's won more than once. Well, then I hope he doesn't get it. Sorry. Louis not only writes, <sighs> directs, produces, dire- I already said directs, yeah. and stars in the, his own show. He didn't get it nominated for Best Comedy Series. I want to see him win Best Actor. Yeah, agreed. I think he's so good. He is. Outstanding lead actress in a comedy series, Zoe Deschanel for her first season of New Girl, which was fantastic. Brilliant. I love it. Lena Dunham for Girls. Edie Falco for Nurse Jackie, Tina Fey for 30 Rock, Julia Louis-Dreyfus for Veep, Melissa McCarthy. Why does this category have seven people, by um, the way? It actually said why. It's because two of them tied for fifth, so they just let them both in or oh, something okay. like that. Uh, Melissa McCarthy for Mike and Molly and Amy Poehler for Parks and Rec. Cool. This is a little bit tougher for me. Yeah. I'm looking at three different people. I don't know. Who are your three? Zoe, Lena, and Amy. I think Amy Poehler should take it. Sorry, the other were great, but I I think Amy Poehler should take it. Leslie Nope definitely had her best story yet yeah, in this season. Of course. I, she ran for public office. Yeah. When they started the show, the first season was only six episodes, and it was kind of... Iffy. I mean, it, it was, was kind of a little misdirected. Like They didn't get there until the second season. Yeah, the and second season, they gave Leslie Nope a real, like, real gung-ho attitude, and she's like a real suffragette, and... She's all about the public good and everything. And this season, she runs for public office. And spoiler alert, she gets it. Because duh. Because duh. Because duh. The, other, the guy she's running against is Paul <laughs> Rudd. And he's just a complete idiot. In fact, he's even rooting for her most yeah. of the time. I think he votes for her. He's yes, actually, he does. He actually says, wait, you're allowed to vote for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Which is why it is a comedy series. But yeah. Um, Lena Dunham's really good. She really she surprised is. me. And Zoe Deschanel in New Girl, that's the best role I've ever seen her play. Oh, agreed. It is agreed. not just her. Like, everyone teased about the adorkable thing at yeah. first. I don't think I don't think it is. No, no, no. I think the show's changed direction a little bit. I was actually surprised that we were both surprised that none of the guys made it into the outstanding lead actor. Yes, I would have loved to see Schmidt in there. Schmidt. Oh, he's so funny. Max Greenfield is his yes. name. And he, he's, even his character changed a lot from the first episode where he was just the douchebag putting money in the douchebag jar right? to whatever he is now. Well, now he's like one of our main like love story yeah, characters. Yeah, and he's great. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess I'll agree with you overall, Amy Poehler. Uh, she's, I think she deserves but it. But if Zoe or Lena win, I would I, also be I'd okay be okay with, with it. it. Anybody else, I don't know. 
The other four. I don't know. I know Tina Fey. Yeah. And yay, no. 30 Rock again. <laughs> like, Sorry. I like 30 Rock, and I feel like I'm talking I'm, I'm talking bad about it, but I'm not. No. I, I like just don't think it deserves awards right now. Yeah, agreed. It's it's probably on its way out. Yes, Actually, it is. It is. Next season, season is the last season. Outstanding lead actor in a miniseries. Uh, we don't know most of these ca- characters, but we do know Benedict Cumberbatch, which is the most English-sounding name ever for Sherlock. <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> and then we also have like Game Change and Luth- basically everything from miniseries or movie right. except for American Horror Story right. is thrown in there, which means Dylan McDermott didn't get nominated. No. Connie did. Yes, she did. You'll see that. So anyway. uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, great. I would give it. I mean, I, that's the only thing I saw, but I'd give it to him because he was fabulous. Yeah, I can't. I can't compare him to anyone else, but he was very good. He made a great Sherlock. He deserves to be in there. Yeah. I think it was a fresh take on a character that we've kind of gotten used to. Yeah. Making him so young and ma- making him basically have Asperger's like symptoms. Yeah. Like, He's yeah. great. Very cool. Outstanding lead actress for a miniseries or movie. We do have Connie Britton who played Vivian in American Horror Story. Ashley Judd in Missing, which because oh. that was only one season, yeah, it got mini-series. nominated as a miniseries. Uh, Nicole Kidman, Julian Moore and Emma Thompson for various other things. Probably going to be Julian Moore. So I've heard. I would, I but would. But I do assume. love Emma Thompson, so I'm just gonna give it to her because I like her more. It's not, it's not gonna be Connie Britton. No, no. I think any four of any of the other four. I don't have think a it'll be Ashley shot. Judd either. If I can put that two cents in. Okay. I would say it'd be any of the other three. <laughs> and I'm giving it to Emma Thompson stars. because she's so great. Emma Thompson is so great. She's so great. You know what I absolutely adore her in? Stranger than fiction. Stranger than fiction. She is fantastic. Thank you for reading my mind. <laughs> So All for right. supporting performances, we've yes. got supporting actor and drama. We have uh, two Downton Abbey's, uh, Abbey actors. We have the guy who plays Carson. His name is Jim Carter. And the guy who plays Bates, who is Brendan Coyle. He is too sad. Bates' story is so sad. So sad. So sad. Okay. Uh, we have Peter Dinklage for Tyrion of from course. Game of Thrones. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito as Gus Fring on Breaking Bad. Jared Harris as Lane Price on Mad oh. Men, which... This is his last chance. Whoops, I mean, spoiler. <laughs> he's leaving the show. Lane left the show, we'll say. Yes. <laughs> uh, and Aaron Paul as Jesse Pinkman on Breaking Bad. Yeah. This is an awesome category. Yeah, agreed. A- a- out of the performing categories, this might be my favorite as far as the talent that's involved. I like the, I didn't realize it was two, two from Downton Abbey and two from Breaking Bad. Yeah, heavy hitters. Yeah. I think uh, actually... Out of those two from Downton Abbey, I love Carson. Me too. Bates has has just, just a good story, and sad. I like Bates, but Carson definitely underrated. Yeah, agreed. Um, but do you think this category belongs to Peter Dinklage? I don't know. I mean, he did get it last year, so I I don't think he has to get it. Uh, I thought I think Gus was fantastic. Gus on Breaking Bad. I mean, the way he plays that character. Yeah. Is fantastic. Yeah. So understated uh, until like that so one moment where he snaps. Yeah. Like there are a few times that he just like all of a sudden he kills someone and yeah. you're like, oh yeah, that's right, he is a kingpin. Yeah. He does that kind of stuff. Um, Lane. Lane. Lane is so good. I'll miss him. I if you don't know who Lane Price from Memon is, but you've seen the second uh, Sherlock Holmes movie, he plays Moriarty. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he tumbles over the waterfall with him. Outstanding supporting actress in a drama drama series. We have uh, someone from The Good Wife, who I don't know. Nope. <laughs> Anna Bates from Downton Abbey. She could take it. Um, it's the woman who plays Skylar on Breaking I Bad. I don't like her. Anna Gunn. You don't like her? I just don't. I really don't like her character. I, don't, I just do not like her. Okay, Haven't hold I on. Told you? Haven't we L- talked about her Let me finish before? the category. Uh, Christina Hendri- Hendricks from uh. Mad Men. Uh, another character from the Good Life, the Good Life, the Good Wife, who I don't know, Jeez. and Maggie Smith as Violet Crawley from Downton Abbey. Well, she's also fabulous. Okay, so you don't like Anna Gunn? No, not at all. Sorry, I just I do not like her. I don't like her. I get so annoyed with everything she does. But isn't I don't like her? Isn't that okay? Why? There are supposed to be like good drama is going to have characters that you don't like. Do you mean like you dislike her? Well, I mean, I, I would say part? like I I don't know. Or do you just? Not like the character. I think it's both. I just don't like it. Okay. I don't really like her character. I do not really like the actress. I just don't. I'm not interested when she's on screen. <laughs> I don't like Walter White, but that's because he's a horrible person. 
Her, I just she, um, she's just annoying to me. Okay. Which is very different. Like I just don't don't like it. All right, I can we, get that. Actually, now I I remember. Uh, I think it should be Christina Hendricks. I think it should be Christina Hendricks as well. Joan she, is given a great amount of responsibility in the season, and actually, one particular task. There was a an episode of Five Things where you saw my desktop, and I know at least one po- person pointed out that I had screenshot. I had a screenshot yeah, up right. of the the five partners of yeah. of the agency, and one of them is now Joan. Mm-hmm. And that moment in the series was like this awesome like breakthrough moment for women. Yeah, she's she's really great. Never mind how she got there. It was great. She deserves it. I hope she gets it. <laughs> I hope she gets it too. Outstanding. Although Maggie Smith is, as always, freaking amazing. She's Maggie Smith. She's Maggie Smith. I love her. She's just. Great. She's really funny on Downton Abbey. She is. She she <laughs> is one of the most rude people on, like one of the most rude characters without ever being rude. Yeah. It's oh, like the most passive. Like you have to read between the lines and realize that she's being really Horribly mean. mean. <laughs> yes, love it. Outstanding supporting actor in comedy series. We and get to choose from the wonderful cast of Modern we Family. We have the entire cast Wait, of Max Modern Greenfield Family. Was nominated. Do you see that? Oh my gosh, how did we miss this before? We missed that. Because we were surrounded by everybody from Modern Family. That I don't know how that happened. Okay, so yeah, we have the four the four cast members from Modern Family. I uh, guess it was because he's supporting. Got it. But I know, but we went through this whole list and like looked ahead. Uh Bill Hader for Apparently, one episode of SNL. I don't know what he did on the Katy Perry episode. Stefan. Stefan. Probably. The hottest nightclub in New York City. It's sh- <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bill Hader is tremendous. And yes. Max Greenfield as Schmidt, which I totally missed, which, oh my God, now I don't know. I don't either. I mean, I don't know. The, the, the actors on Modern Family are so good. They are. They make that show what it is. Yes. But I freaking loved Max Greenfield. <sighs> I'd never heard of him before the show. No. And he, was so he good. instantly became my favorite character. And that actor, you can tell he improvs constantly. Yes. He's just he's just really funny. He's not just written. He is funny. Yeah. I follow him on Twitter. Is he funny? Yeah, he's funny. <laughs> uh I'm just gonna give it to him. You are? Yeah. Okay. I like him. I don't know if he'll actually win or not. I mean, it'll probably be somebody from Modern Family. They, I, I mean, the be. odds say it will be, but I don't <laughs> know. Maybe it'll be like completely split. Some yeah. people are like Mitch people. Some people are Phil people. I don't Jay know. Jay people. Got it. Well, yeah. so anyway, that category is great. I'm gl- so glad Schmidt was there, is there. I'm glad Bill Hader is there. I love yeah, him. Yeah, agreed. He is also great on SNL. Outstanding supporting actress in comedy series. We have uh, someone from The Big Bang Theory. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Julie Bowen from Modern Family, Sophia Vergara from Modern Family, Catherine Justin, who we talked about on Sean and Carter's uh, Buffy project because she appeared on one episode. She was on Desperate Housewives. She also died this year, so yeah, She'll I don't. Take it. I don't know if that like does that give you an unfair advantage if it's going to be a posthumous award. I don't know. Well, I didn't realize that she already won two Emmy awards for that role. Really? I didn't know that yes. either. Sorry, I clicked on her to make sure I knew who it was. And she was known for her regular role as Karen in Desperate Housewives, for which she won two Emmy Awards. So she okay. doesn't need to take it. Well, then maybe I'd say if she hadn't won, right. she might have a slight advantage. I, a lot of this is like politics yeah. and rewarding people for their time. Right. Like like in the Oscars, they've nominated people for much lesser roles than they played, but just because they never won. Yeah. Like Peter O'Toole will get nominations until he's 100 just because he's never won. Right. Uh, we also we have uh, someone from Nurse Jackie and, and uh, Kristen and Wiig. From I just, I'm just SNL. gonna give it to her. I think she should take it. You know what? For all of her time. And In this everything. category, I'm giving it to her too. I hope she takes it. That I would be so I love amazing. the two actresses on Modern Family, but I do too. Kristen Wiig last season on SNL. Who knows if she'll do TV in the future? Right. I, I think and she's she got. She was so outstanding on SNL. Always. 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 Consistent. Yes. Consistently so. weird. Consistently weird and fantastic. <laughs> I I think one of my favorite characters that she played is the one who, whenever they do the the guessing game where they need to do, it's like taboo, mm-hmm. and she can't. She's the Broadway actress. She's the Broadway actress <laughs> who can't stop singing, and she always gives away the, well, they all always oh, give I've away the, the word. Oh, I've said it. <laughs> She's great. 
<laughs> Outstanding supporting actor in miniseries or movie. We've got Martin Freeman as Watson and Sherlock. So deserves it. Dennis O'Hare as Larry Harvey in American Horror Story. Okay. And then uh, Hatfields and McCoys, Hemingway and Gellhorn, and Game Changer all in there. With uh, Ed Harris, Tom Berenger, and David Strathern, which mm-hmm. are all... All probably better known actors than Martin Freeman, I'm going to say. Yeah, but I like him more. <laughs> Martin Freeman's probably going to get a lot of attention over the next two or three yeah. years, I'd oh, say. Of course. <laughs> All of a sudden, people who did not realize that that guy's who, who that guy was before are going to know who he is. Right. It's yeah. kind of like the exact same thing that happened to Elijah Wood. Yeah, because he's going to be the Hobbit. So um, I, don't, I don't know. I guess I'll, I want it to go to Watson, but I don't think it will. Agreed. I think I think the other bigger Somebody miniseries or more highbrow right unfortunately oh, he is well. a really good watson though he is and outstanding supporting actress we have francis conroy as moira from american horror story that is that is the old moira not the okay. young and right, hot one right, right. um someone from something called page eight which i've never even heard of no don't uh know. jessica lang from american horror we story we still don't know how you say that by the way it's, i'm going with lang I like Lange. Lang. Whatever. Sarah Paulson, not for American Horror Story, but for <laughs> Game Change. She was an American Horror Story. And uh, someone from Hatfields and McCoys. Whose name is Mare. Mare Winningham. Maybe it's pronounced Maybe they pronounce Mary. The e. <laughs> See, you were right there. Okay. Um, but anyway, Jessica Lang, I think, probably stands a pretty good chance. I think she, she was really good. She was really good. She was really, really fantastic. And when Carter and I didn't know that the show was like going to wrap yeah. at the end, we all of our predictions were about what was going on with her character. Yeah. Like everything that we were talking about was what was going to happen with her in the next season. Constance. And it, stuff is it still going to happen with her in the next season, but she won't be playing the same person. Right. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah. So then we got a bunch of uh, guest actors and actresses appearances. I'm I'm not going to really... We can highlight any that we liked. Uh, There were a couple SNL episodes that were particularly good. Um, I'm just trying to read through it. Don't really see any. Jimmy Fallon hosted an episode of SNL that uh, he was really good. So did Melissa McCarthy and Maya Rudolph. Yeah. And (laughs) props to Maya Rudolph because I bet she went into that that recording expecting to do the Whitney Houston impression because yeah. that's what she does. And it was the week that Whitney Houston died. Yeah. So they didn't do it. Of course. I was, I was really, as it was leading up to it, I was like, I can't wait for Whitney Houston. Shoot, shoot, bad, oop. and then Whitney Houston died and my uh. Rudolph had to host. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> now we don't get to see it. Yeah. Um, in these categories, Uma Thurman on smash, we watched smash and she was pretty good. Yeah. She was all right. good. She was all right. Yeah. You're just giving I didn't her really all right. I really like her. Um, Dot Marie Jones as Beast on Glee. Oh, uh, I was trying to figure out who that was now, and I Beast don't... is consistently my favorite. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Small She's character awesome. on Glee. Yeah, agreed. She will make me cry for happy or sad reasons all the time. Yeah, she's very touching. Um, Michael J. Fox was nominated for his guest appearance on Curb Your Enthusiasm as himself, where he's a complete <laughs> asshole. He's so mean to Larry David, and in general, I guess, but no one else notices because they're like, oh, he has Parkinson's, be nice to him. And Larry David just, you know, he's just a jerk as well, so he sees through all the, he sees through his ruse. Mm-hmm. I did like the Melissa McCarthy episode. Well, of course. She was great. I can't wait for her to host it again next year, which I'm sure she will. Yep, agreed. Because she's she's on the rise, that woman. Yep. So in the directing categories, we've got uh, such great shows as Mad Men and Homeland, Breaking Bad and Downton Abbey. And Boardwalk Empire again. I'm going to, I'm probably going to give directing to Did Mad it? Men. Yeah. Oh, really? I yes. thought you would have said Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad, I, I really, I like that it's Vince Gilligan who was nominated. He is the creator of the series. Okay. Um. But it was that it was that episode of Mad Men again. It was that yeah. episode. The other woman. The other woman that was so good. Mm-hmm. And if either one of them, actually, if Mad Men, Homeland, or Breaking Bad take it, I'm fine with that. Cool. In comedy series, we've got Louie for Louie, Lena Dunham for Girls, Jake Kasdan for New Girl. Jake Kasdan is one of the stars of New yeah, Girl. Yeah, I didn't realize he directed it. He directs a whole bunch. Huh. I think he's directed like half of them. Uh, Steven Levitin for Modern Family. He's been nominated before. If he has, he might have won before. Uh, Robert Wide for Kirby Enthusiasm. 
and Jason Winner, Weiner, Weiner for Modern Family. Uh, I'm going to give it to Louis. Okay. Yeah, I agreed. We watched uh, a recent episode from season three that in the credits they will show like, yeah. sometimes they'll show a gag reel or just like an extended cut or maybe a little bit of stand up. And sometimes they'll just do flat out behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And this was an episode where he was at the beach and <laughs> there's a scene that takes place in the water and there's like a guy dragging him out of the water. And over the credits was a camera that was on the beach watching the action taking place in the water with the cameraman, the sound man, Mm -hmm. the guy holding the cameraman, and Louis like swimming frantically, the guy's saving him, and then all of a sudden Louis like, okay, stop. And then camera get in front of us, camera get in front of us. Right? He directs all all of the action. He's like, everyone ready? 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 Action. And then he goes. And I was like, man, that is so cool. I I want that job. I want to be a director. It looks fun. Um, I'm going to skip all of the rest of the, the categories for directing because... Except for the other one that Louis C.K. should also win. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Outstanding directing for variety music or comedy special. Uh, the kinds of things you see in this category are typically, and they are Award nominated... Ceremonies. Glenn Glenn Wise for the 65th Tony Awards. We have the Nutcracker on PBS, the 84th Academy Awards, the 54th Grammy Awards, and then we have Louis C.K. for Live at the Beacon Theater. Which is pretty crazy. It's awesome that he was nominated for that. Yeah, that is. is the special that he did that he sold on his website for $5. Mm-hmm. And he basically made himself like a couple million dollars, which he then... So he can go buy a house? No. He actually gave it out to the to the crew that works on Louie. Oh, awesome. He he redistributed it. He's like, here you go, guys, for all your hard work. Because Louie's awesome. Yes. So for the categories of outstanding writing, uh-huh. uh, we have drama. We have two episodes of Mad Men. Uh, the Other Woman is one of them. And then Far Away Places. Do you want to open that and see which one that was? Sure, I, I will. Uh, Julian Fellows for Downton Abbey. He is the creator of Downton Abbey. Uh, Howard Gordon and two other writers for Homeland's Pilot, which was an awesome pilot and hooked us immediately. And then uh, two of the writers for... Oh, actually, there are three Mad Men episodes in here. Commissions and Fees is the other one. That's the one that Lane was nominated for. Okay. That is the one where Lane exits the series. <clears throat> yes, leaves. Kind and what what which one is far, far away, away places? places? Is that one where they do the ti- the timeline? They go through it three different times. Dawn and May. Oh, leave. that's what oh, I thought it was. That was a good one too. They go to the ha- whatever hotel that is. It was a Howard Johnson. The Hojo. A Hojo. Yes. Oh man. Okay. Well, I like Homeland a lot. And they take LSD. <laughs> so. But I'm giving it to Mad Men. Any <laughs> any one of these three episodes would be tremendous. Yeah. Uh oh man. I hope I hope Homeland takes it for acting and, and all that stuff. I'm okay with writing going to any of the Mad Men episodes as well. Definitely. Just the fact that they got three episodes nominated is insane. Yes. Also, I don't understand why they can't just name them on Downtown Abbey. Why is it called episode seven? <laughs> why? Every single one, like uh, Hugh Bonneville was nominated for episode two. Right. What? Okay. Because they don't so have titles, period. Right. Yeah, that's that's kind of weird. Like the second series and the first series and second series don't have titles either. It's just series one, series two, mm-hmm. episode one, episode two. Outstanding writing for comedy series, we have Louis for Louis, Lena Dunham for Girls, the pilot, uh, Chris McKenna for Community. It is remedial chaos theory. That is the episode that. Nice. <laughs> yes, there are six different timelines. You get to see the outcome of each one of them. Or actually, I think it's like seven. I think they do a last one at the end. Yeah. That was a really good episode. Amy Poehler for writing the episode, the last episode of Parks and Rec, The Debate. Or no, no, no. That was the next to last episode. And then Michael Shore for Parks and Rec, this is the last episode, Win, Lose, or Draw. Yes. I'm okay with This is a really competitive anyone. category for yeah. me. It would be hard for me to pick my favorite. I cannot. I can't. I am torn. Th- those are all good, good things. Yep. Agreed. I do love Parks and Rec. I'm glad they got some noms throughout the whole thing <laughs> i'll skip the outstanding writing for miniseries because yeah once again we have not watched any we haven't of them. watched them except sherlock outstanding writing for variety music or comedy program i thought this was interesting because we've got colbert yes! report and john stewart and bill maher and snl and then also portlandia <laughs> oh that's hilarious which if you follow my stuff i put portlandia on five things when the second season was starting we had already watched the first season and yes. i was like this is there's a bird on it <laughs> put a bird on put it. Put a bird on it. 
it's it is really funny i don't know how you would write some of those sketches it seems like especially like the two the two like the feminist bookstore right that is clearly not written out no just, where do you find this book just get it it's it's right up there <laughs> there's there's so it's so weird um on this show it takes place in portland oregon which uh the very first episode kind of shows to you is very much like america in the 90s like it's just like <laughs> oh, yeah. stuck in the 90s for some reason like it's kind of a hipsterish thing, yes, I guess. It is. And I there were some people who commented when I talked about it on Five Things that said, "Yes, Portland is really like that." Yes. Yes, it is. Um, but on the show, it's a sketch comedy show. Fred Armisen and Carrie Brownstein are the writers and stars. The two of them just play different characters all over the town. Yeah. And so these two characters. And Fred Armisen so amazing at transformations. He he's can incredible. play women with no problem. Not at all. He's amazing. He can play any ethnicity. Absolutely. He's really good at it. On SNL, he is their Barack Obama, and he's, he's awesome like at it. Every lit- he was a, on Parks and Rec. Wasn't he from their sister city in Peru or something? Yes. <laughs> he can do anything. We've we've seen him uh, being interviewed once, and yeah. uh, he did the Barack Obama impression, and it was like, whoa. Yeah. This is really bizarre. So I'm excited to see that nominated, but I bet it's probably going to go no, to John Stewart. Of course. Maybe the Col- does the Colbert Report win? No, no. Or because I they're feel competing like it's more against- the Daily Show Part Two, so it's kind of challenging when you have the original there. But it's not like it's not. It's, it's not, not it's like not the Daily like Show. It. No, but the audience would be. It's, I don't know. Yeah, I got you. So then we have. Um, Outstanding writing for variety, music, or Once comedy. Again, again exact same thing. We have like the Tony Awards and the Academy Awards, but then Louis C.K. I would love Louis C.K. to win writing because that special, right. which you fell asleep through and didn't actually watch. It was so watch, funny, though. <laughs> that special is amazing, and we will Sean watch it sometime. Sean decides we should watch TV late at night. It's hard. It was probably 9 o'clock, and you know it. Late at night. In the middle of the night. Outstanding writing for nonfiction programming. We don't watch any of these shows, but I'm excited that Anthony Bourdain is in there. Yeah, agreed. And then they have some interesting facts at the bottom. Yeah, I think the most interesting thing here is we have the nominations uh, uh, by total totals. Nom- I think the most interesting thing here is that we have total nominations uh, ranked. So the most nominations at 17 were Mad Men, which, sure, not really that surprised. Right. And American Horror Story? What on earth? What, else? what are their other nominations? Well, I think they got a lot of technical nominations. They must have gotten tons of them because they only had one acting and, like, that was all. They had a couple acting. They had supporting acting. You're right. They did. You're right. They, they did. had a handful of them. They had three at least. And then uh, Downton Abbey follows tied with Hatfields and McCoys with 16. Hemingway and Gellhorn is 15. So it seems like the miniseries really end up on top with the most nominations. There's yeah. four miniseries all at the top. And then we've got Modern Family and SNL. And then 30 Rock, Breaking Bad, Sherlock. And then, then the rest. Homeland mm-hmm. is, is up there with nine. That's yeah. not bad. I wish it had a little more. Agreed. I, I really hope it makes a showing. I would, I would love if it took acting categories. I think we both discussed categories. that the two lead acting categories are absolutely deserved, but I can't believe that Mandy Patinkin wasn't nominated for yeah. supporting actor. I didn't know anything about... I think about... I could have kicked out either of the two people from Downton Abbey and put in Mandy, Mandy Patinkin. Patinkin. When we started watching it, I don't think I knew anything about Mandy no. Patinkin. In fact, I didn't even recognize him from, from things that I'd no, seen him in. not at all. Like... Um, Princess Bride. Princess Bride. He is Diego Montoya. He, he killed- <laughs> he's such a character actor yes. that you don't recognize no, him. No, definitely from not. From part to part. And the character that he plays in Saul. in uh, Homeland yeah. is mm-hmm. basically Claire Danes like boss and kind of like father figure, like a mentor yeah, kind right. of thing, and he's just tremendous. Absolutely. <sighs> I'm I'm very disappointed that he wasn't nominated. There weren't really anybody else in the show that I think should have been, but he was so good. As were the two leads, and I'm glad they got it. But yeah, yeah. So this will be um, this will air. The Emmys will be on on September 23rd. So yeah, this will be posted like immediately before they're on. So we'll get right in there with all the other predictions. We'll get uh, Entertainment Weekly's predictions probably at the same time as this is posted. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be right on the cusp of it, Alicia. Agreed. Woo. We are TV critics now. We are. So what what uh, returning fall show do you think you're most looking forward to? Homeland. Yeah. At this point, right now it's Homeland. That's like, all that you can think about. about it, I'm like, I just want to watch it again. I wonder what's gonna happen. I can't I imagine even... what happens because of the way the season ends. I know. The way that the first season ends, 
it's kind of like, where do you go from here? Right. I'm really excited. I know. I am too. And so, I don't know. There's a lot of other shows. So, of course, I'm excited for everything to come back. Everything. The Game of Thrones. <laughs> I'm just going to say that even though it's not coming back for forever. Next year. Like April. Yeah. Forever. Well, Cole, thanks for sitting down and discussing our... You made me. Our picks for... Why do you keep saying that? <laughs> just kidding. I'm uncocking the gun. I'm putting it down. Safety's on. You can go back to your regular business now. JK. It was really fun. <laughs>